What is up guys? We're back with another BIOS video and today we're checking out the BIOS here on the Gigabyte Z790 Aorus Elite X Wi-Fi 7. Now this is sort of their refresh to the Z790 line. So all of their sort of like newer X motherboards will have this new BIOS and this is going to be a lot more of a user-friendly BIOS. They made some really great updates with this. I wasn't the biggest fan of the previous Gigabyte BIOS. It was just things were a little bit harder to find. So I think they made things a lot easier here. Now, if you're wondering, how do I get to the screen? Like, how do I get into the BIOS? When you turn on your computer for the first time, just keep on hitting the delete key on your keyboard, not the backspace. Make sure it's delete and you'll be dropped into this screen. Now, this is the easy mode. So this is gonna have all of your information and it does have quite a lot of settings now with this new BIOS. So we're gonna go ahead and go through everything. First, at the top, we have all of the sort of buttons here. We have help, we can change the language, you can load defaults, and I have loaded this back to the defaults. So this is how it's gonna ship, you know, when you build your computer for the first time. I haven't changed anything. So easy to load defaults, save and exit. You have a favorites menu and you can search throughout the BIOS, which is really great if you are looking for a specific setting. Over here, we do have our information. So it says the motherboard that we're running, the BIOS, the CPU that we do have installed, how much RAM we have installed and the micro code. Over here, we have our CPU frequency in real time, CPU temperature in real time, CPU voltage in real time, memory frequency and our system temperature over here these are sort of like instant overclocking options and i will go ahead and go over these once we get into the advanced mode because they are listed of like what they specifically do but they're like you can easily just you know turn them on and off right here incredibly easily we have smart fan 6 so this will show you your fans that you do have in operation and the speed that they are running we only have our cpu fan of course because we're running this on a test bench but you can also go into smart fan 6 and this gives you a whole thing where you can set up your fan curves you can do all of that stuff set up your like cpu fan fail warning all that kind of stuff you can set up right in here you can easily tune all your fans as well for the best sort of like you know performance to noise ratio you can do all of that within smart fan 6. Under peripherals, this just shows you everything that you have connected. So our PCI Express X16 slot, of course, we have a graphics card in there. And then we have an M.2 drive installed and it lists that right there. Here is our boot sequence and um, it just shows, you know, we just have our M.2 drive uh, with Windows Boot Manager. But if you did have multiple things, they would all be listed here. And then you could easily drag and drop to set your boot sequence. Very easy to do. Down here, we have our DRAM status show. So it shows our memory that we have installed. There's a DDR5 auto booster, and then there's a DDR5 XMP booster. Now the XMP booster is new. So if we just click on this where it says disabled, it brings up this list and it's going to set DDR5 XMP overclocks or settings based on the vendor ID and PMIC analysis. So. This helps you like really instantly sort of overclock your memory, which is awesome. So as you can see, like I said, it's by vendor ID. So we have Micron memory, Hynix memory or SK Hynix and Samsung. So depending on the memory that you're running, you know, you can select uh, an instant overclock and see if your memory can go ahead and do it. It just makes things so much easier. And again, they have everything listed here, all of the different speeds and timings. Um, very easy to go ahead and, you know, set that up if you want to. Of course, if you don't want to mess with, you know, DDR5 overclocking, you can just enable your XMP profile. So here I just select XMP1 and boom, it's going to load my XMP profile settings and we're good to go. Over here, we have a new sort of menu called quick access. And here you can see I have like Q flash, SPD info, SPD setup, uh, resizable bar support. We'll go ahead and turn that on. Um, and what's really cool about this is that you can change kind of what's here. So there's this little dial here, you click on that, and this allows you to change the order of what's going to be in this menu. So if for some reason, you know, I wanted a memory channel detection message, I could put that actually up top. And then when I close this, you'll see that it changes. So again, I can put the 
S SPD setup back and we'll move memory channel. It doesn't really matter to me. So I'll put it back. And as you can see, the quick access menu changes. So if there's some settings that you need quick access to, you can set them up right here very easily. Now that's everything that is in the easy mode. I think it has everything that you want. It has your fan stuff and lists all of your information. There are instant overclocks in here. And of course you have your boot sequence and you can set your XMP profile. So that's it for easy mode. Now to go into advanced mode, you just click right here at the top. So it just says, you know, advanced mode, click on that. And we are brought into advanced mode and typically you're brought into the tweaker menu, but they're a favorites men menu over here. So you can add pretty much any setting that you want to your favorites menu. So it's easier to find. So if you have a setting that's like, you know, down in three menus, four menus, you can add it here. So it's a lot easier to access. So you have your favorites right there. Now tweaker, of course, is everything that you want to do to fully tune overclock your system. It's all in here, all of your CPU memory, your voltages, it's all right here. Now, as I said, on the easy mode, we had this perf drive or performance drive over here. This lists everything, you know, that that does. So again, we have it set to optimization. So optimization uh, says you want a 360, um, you know, AIO all cores turbo max clock the unleash is top end open look open loop liquid cooling or better max cpu performance without limits instant six gigahertz so one to two cores boost to six gigahertz spec enhance lower temp with competitive performance and then e-core disable of course would just disable your e-core so it's nice that they tell you which each one does and they kind of, you know, let you know, like, oh, you should be running a 360 or 240 or, you know, just a tower cooler. Like, it lets you know right there, which is pretty cool. CPU upgrade, you can set this to max performance profile or default. And then you have all of your normal stuff, like CPU base clock, your clock ratios, everything like that. You can go into advanced CPU settings. And this is all of the stuff that has to do with your CPU. So like, you know, you can turn off your thermal monitor, you can turn off hyper threading, um, Intel speed shift technology, Turbo Boost Max, Turbo Boost Max 3.0, all of the stuff that has to do with the CPU, it's all in here and it's very easy to access. You have your AVX settings, active turbo ratios, um, you know, you can enable or disable your P cores and your E core C states, turbo power limits, like everything that you need for the CPU is right in here. Now, one thing I did notice about this BIOS, which was a bit weird to say, you know, I'm in this, I'm down in this menu now, and I want to go back to the previous menu. Typically in almost every BIOS, you just hit escape, but when you hit escape, it brings up the save menu. You actually have to go back and click on tweaker and then that will bring you back to the settings so definitely keep that in mind it was a bit annoying because i'm used to just hitting escape on like again pretty much any bios that i've used we'll go down we have our memory settings again everything that we kind of saw on the easy mode but there is advanced memory settings that we can pop into and we have all of our advanced memory settings here spd info you can see your spd info and spd setup and you can actually have a user defined uh, SPD setting here that you can set up if you want to. Um, but you can see all of your information for your memory here. Memory channels timing. So you have all of your timings right here that you can set and training settings as well. You have all of that in here. Now, what's interesting is again, this is a, a menu and then another menu. So again, if I go in men, uh, memory training settings, I can actually hit escape and go back. But then if I hit escape again, it's going to bring up the uh, save menu, which is, again, they, they need to change that. I would like them to change that. Going back, we have all of our voltage controls. So this is, again, setting your CPU voltages, all of your voltages, everything to do with power is right here. And then you can go down into advanced voltage settings. You can set that in your VRM settings. You can do that um, very easily. And again, we hit escape. We hit escape. Oh, and then... <laughs> It asks us if we're going to save again. So we have to hit on, click on tweaker, and then we're back. Uh, DRAM voltage is also at the bottom here. And you can click into DDR5 voltage control. If it will let me. There we go. And you can see all of that information there as well. 
and we'll go back to the tweaker sentence. That's pretty much everything in tweaker. Again, it has all of your frequencies, all of your DDR5 stuff, all of your power stuff. It's all right in here. Very easy to find. Um, so again, everything to do with if you were overclocking or tuning your system is in tweaker. Under settings, again, it's just everything else that's pretty much on the board. This is where you're going to find all of those settings. So under platform power, all of your different power settings that you can set right here. IO ports, again, everything that's on the board. So you can, you know, enable or disable internal graphics. You can turn on the LAN controller. You could turn on or off the audio controller. Um, when you first install Windows, it will ask you to install the Gigabyte Utilities Downloader. This is going to download all of your drivers and software. If you don't want that, you can turn it off. Um, so it's enabled by default. So again, it, you will get that prompt when you install Windows for the first time, but you can turn it off here if you want to. USB configuration again, everything to do with USB in here. And then we have network stack configuration. I don't have it, you know, my network connected. NVMe configuration, you can see information on our Lexar drive and, you know, information about it. SATA configuration, we don't have any drives connected, but this is all of your SATA settings if you wanted to configure those. And then VMD setup menu, um, enable or disable the VMD controller. And then your Ethernet controller, which again, we don't have connected here. You can set that up there as well. Under miscellaneous, you have like your LEDs and system power on state. You can change all that. You can change your link speeds. Um, trusted computing settings are in here as well. So you can go into those and change all of that stuff around if you want to. And then acoustic noise settings are here as well. And then we can go back to settings and then PC health status. This just gives you some, you know, some basic information on your voltages and says the case is open, of course, because we are running this in a test bench and go back to settings. And that is pretty much it in the settings menu. Again, everything that's pretty much on the board, you can configure in this menu. System info just gives us our, this is like your basic info screen. So again, let us know the BIOS, the BIOS version, the BIOS date. Um, always good to know this information because again, if you're on an older version of the BIOS, you can always look at the date and be like, oh, this is, this is really old. I need to update my BIOS. You can see all of that. Um, languages, you can set up your access level. Um, plug in devices info again that's what was shown on the first page or on the easy mode so again we can see all of that stuff and then you can go into QFlash this allows you to easily flash your BIOS I use this tool to update the BIOS because when I got this board it was on BIOS F1 easy up you know update to F4 super simple to go ahead and do that so it's everything that's in system info under boot you just set up like your boot option priorities um, you can set up administrator password, user password, secure boots. You can do it all right in here. Super easy to go ahead and do that. And then you do have save and exit at the end. And as I always say, it's great to see boot override. We can load our optimized defaults. We can also save a profile as well as load a profile. If you had something like a gaming profile or an overclocking profile, you can save and load those if you want to. So this BIOS is really good. I do, like I said, I'm not a fan of like, if I hit escape, it wants to automatically save instead of going back to the previous menu. Also, I didn't mention that the mouse is so slow. So I have my mouse on the highest DPI setting and it's still super slow. So those are the things that I wish Gigabyte would fix, but I really like all of the customization within the easy menu now things are very easy to find and it has everything that you kind of want and i really like the new ddr5 xmp booster and this quick access menu now again this was just to show you what's in the bios we didn't deep on anything but if you have any questions about this bios go ahead and leave it in the comment section below and if you enjoyed this video i would appreciate it if you hit the thumbs up we'll see you guys in the next video